everybody. Welcome back to the Tipsy Ghosts. We're your tipsy hosts, Sarah, Sarah, and Lindsay. Hey, guys. Hi. We together went on a trip. A ghost trip. Yeah. <laughs> Where did we go? At Concordia, Kansas. Ooh. Concordia. Ah. I don't know anything about Concordia. Tell me more. What you do know about Concordia is it has a lovely theater that Ooh. they say is haunted named the Brown Grand Theater. I can't wait to hear about it. Yay. And we'll just say this. Concordia is Western Kansas. Western Northern. <laughs> Western Northern. <laughs> it's New Kansas City, you go up. It's a minute from Kansas City. There's two kinds of Kansas, and we were in the type two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> type one and type two? <laughs> type okay, one Kansas. Guys. Hey, panic. <laughs> I feel that feels very insulting, and I don't know why. <laughs> That's what I thought of when you said type two. <laughs> but it felt directed at me personally. Oh, no. <laughs> You're type <laughs> We are type one. We went to type two. <laughs> what is type one and type two, Kansas? Um, like Kansas City is type one, and that's it. It's like city cities with a population greater than. 90% of Kansas. I was so going to say, so Kansas you, City and Wichita. <laughs> if you separate the Kansas into fourths, <laughs> one, two, three, f- type four, where most of the people live, is one or two, whatever you want it to be. That, and then the other one is the other one. Most of Kansas is very rural, and there's not when a lot of people. When you think of flat Kansas, <laughs> it's western Kansas. That's where we went, small town Kansas. But then we went so far, we got in the Flint Hills. We did. Yeah. Yep. Kansas is supposed to be flat, but when it gets closer to Colorado, it gets a little less flat. It gets a little For like a bump. minute. We made we made it there. We did. And beyond. And beyond. And back. It was a long drive. Brown Grand Theater. <laughs> I don't know how to segue back. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you about this uh the BGT. In the early nineteen hundreds, the citizens of Concordia, Kansas, they outgrew their old theater because there were traveling troops. On their way to Denver, would stop and stay in the local hotels and play a few shows while they were in town. So that's a nice little source of income for the town. Plus, it's entertainment because I can't imagine there was much to do in western Kansas in um, the early 1900s. Play in the Flint Hills. Yep. (laughs) Grow some corn. Mm -hmm. Harvest the corn. (laughs) Play in a river. Um, yep, that's about it. <laughs> Chase the buffalo. Yes. We just gave you plenty of things to do. There's literally nothing fun <laughs> to do. Rude. Tips and cows. <laughs> okay, I take that. Yes. Thank you. They needed a new theater, and mm. they didn't have the money for it, basically. So, the Concordiats, that's what the website calls, I would say Concordians, but the Concordiats. Yes. <laughs> Concordian sounds like accordion. It does. Maybe they didn't want to be associated with that. In accordions? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> not. It's a really... <laughs> Don't move me in with those guys. <laughs> controversial topic Not here. that it's controversial. Type two <laughs> accordion. <laughs> we are type one. <laughs> they eventually found somebody to fund the new venue. Okay. Uh, a man by the name of Colonel Napoleon Bonaparte Brown. Oh, a letdown. <laughs> And I got really excited. <laughs> Did you really think Napoleon Bonaparte came to Kansas to build a theater? Maybe. I know it wasn't probably his time era, but maybe. Oh, boy. Uh, Side note. Not that I know when Napoleon died, but why would I you name like your child after Napoleon? This was a long time ago. Right. They're really into history. <laughs> okay. I feel like it wasn't at the time of Concordia, Kansas, but you know, We'll have to look at things on a timeline, I I'm suppose. just saying there are some people in history look, you shouldn't name your kids after. I'll look it up later. <laughs> yeah, that really does seem intentional, doesn't it? <laughs> the middle name really is Holden. <laughs> it is intentional, I believe. <laughs> Napoleon <Yes>. Fine. <laughs> Bonaparte Brown. Yes. <laughs> Napoleon Brown. <laughs> Adorable. Colonel Napoleon Bonaparte Brown and his wife, Catherine. Uh, they had recently settled in Concordia with a, quote, suitcase full of money, which sounds really nice. Sounds fancy. In 1905, Colonel Brown announced his plans for a fully outfitted opera house. Okay. Cool. It's exciting. We need a new theater. We need some culture. We're going to get even more culture. I'm going to stop tipping those cows and go to the theater. He probably felt a little competition and eagerness to get the opera house up and running because neighboring towns had also announced plans to build their large new opera houses. Brown's son, Earl Van Dom Brown, 
oversaw construction and worked with an architect from Kansas City. So type one, Kansas. They went to type one. Uh, His name was Carl Bowler. And fun fact, Carl and his brother Robert were architects for over 100 theaters, primarily in the Midwest, but also extending to some parts of the southwestern area of the country. And the theaters that you might know are the Granada and KCK and Lawrence. Uh I've been Um, there. The Rio Theater in Overland Park. And then the Midland in KC Mo. Been, been there. there. So they broke ground in 1906 and were all about using local resources from labor to limestone to locally fired bricks. Ooh, limestone is the spooky stone. That's right. Upon completion, it stood 60 foot tall. I put I wrote G-I-G for tall. 60 <laughs> foot gig. <laughs> 60 feet. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> 60 foot gig. It, so I think it might be like big or tall. 60 feet big. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so, that's not much better. <laughs> it's 60 feet big. <laughs> it is. And 120 feet long. <laughs> gig and long. <laughs> gig and long. <laughs> okay. New one. It's a, I'm showing my sheltered little upbringing that's a christian song deep and wide oh okay then (laughs) i'm saying motions too (laughs) no 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 (laughs) in and out (laughs) stop corrupting my childhood (laughs) oh i don't know that we did that (laughs) that ship has sailed (laughs) the overall design was in a renaissance style and cost forty thousand dollars Thank you for asking, which I is... I am going to ask. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you before you ask. It's Thank about $1.3 million. Okay. Mm. The first production was called The Vanderbilt Cup Race, which had previously spent eight months on Broadway. Unfortunately, Colonel Brown and his son Earl died within four years of the theater opening. Oh, so they worked so them? hard. Yeah. Hmm. Ownership passed to their... <laughs> their windows. <laughs> Seriously, what was going on when you wrote this? I have no idea. <laughs> you were like, I've already written it. <laughs> I was so proud. I, know. I was like, I don't have to do anything this week. Except maybe proofread. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah, they passed it on to their windows. That makes sense. That's very kind of them. <laughs> my doors get everything in my will. <laughs> oh, I was saying the floors. Because they really held me up. They did. <laughs> Not your walls? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Anyway, really um, on them. Uh, the windows and the widows. <laughs> They're going to say the walls. The, the widows. He, got it now. <laughs> ownership was passed to the windows and the walls. <laughs> I couldn't even get like what you were trying to mean. <laughs> I just legit was like, windows, okay. <laughs> widows. That makes more sense. Oh, yeah. Widows. <laughs> yes. That's what we yes, were looking for. That's the word. <laughs> and it was owned by Lil John. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Lil John got, bought it as well. So their <laughs> widows didn't like each other, so they wouldn't work together. Oh. So the theater was presented to the city of Concordia. Oh. Oh, okay. They were just like, here, Concordia, have it. We don't want it. <laughs> yeah. We can't figure it out. I mean, that's fair. However, there were some financial issues, and it was returned to back to the family estate. <laughs> no. So it was managed by Ray Green, who was the editor of the Daily Newspaper, and married to Gertrude who was Earl Brown's widow. So it came back to the family, and Gertrude was like, hey, I don't want this. You handle it. And so he did. He became the manager. Okay. A variety of live entertainment shows went on through 1925, when the film industry started to blossom. So the theater was turned into a movie house by 1929, and over the next 30 years, it received several upgrades, like a movie theater marquee and air conditioning system. I appreciate that upgrade. Mm Mm-hmm. A fire protection booth, which I appreciate. (laughs) Safety first. (laughs) A widescreen and the ladies' lounge. Ooh, that sounds fancy. But it was turned into a concession stand. Oh, okay. The Brown Grand Theater was recognized and listed in the National Historic Register in 1973. Very cool. By this time, the theater had again fallen into disrepair. And so they wanted to start restoration efforts. So they did that a couple of years later in 1975. And through a ton of hard work, the city was able to restore the theater back to its original beauty with modern upgrades. 
It is beautiful. The theater reopened in the early 80s with three women sitting in the front row who had attended the original opening in 1907, which I think is adorable. It is adorable. Mm -hmm. And the first play that went on on opening night, the original after the reopen, was, again, the Vanderbilt Cup race. So they did the same show that they did on the original opening. Very nostalgic. Very nostalgic there. So as for the reported hauntings, many believe in the spirit of Earl Brown and that he roams the building. There have been reports of a perpetually running water fountain. Sounds like a nightmare for their bill. A spectral figure wearing period clothing wandering the balcony. (laughs) (laughs) Be mature. (laughs) She's just walking around wearing a giant tampon on her head. (laughs) Dressed as a tampon. (laughs) Waltzing through the (laughs) <laughs> she's a fifth grader. <laughs> okay, so she's got like a tampon G string and pad pasties. Ew. <laughs> tampon G string. <laughs> through the aisles. Flowing. <laughs> Is it an angel? Flow? Yes. <laughs> the river. Ew. The Red Sea. The river runs red. <laughs> <laughs> Riding on a boat that is a giant pad, <laughs> a maxi pad. <laughs> She is afloat. <laughs> While eating chocolate. <laughs> well, I can't decide if that sounds awesome for her or <laughs> just terrible for her. She's terrible. She's honestly. lounging. <laughs> <laughs> no more lounge area. <laughs> they took out the ladies' lounge. She can't lounge. <laughs> um, okay. um, also, besides the period clothing. <laughs> Mysteriously appearing nails in the walls during the restoration. Oh, okay. like hammer nails. <laughs> Not like nails? fingernails. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Maybe. So they're just poking out of the walls. It's been so long Imagine. since I wrote this. I don't know if they meant like <laughs> n- hammer nails or like nails. Why is that where your mind went? <laughs> nails in the wall. <laughs> Lindsay and I are thinking like, oh, what a weird screw in there. I was thinking like, yeah, that's weird that nails would just be coming out of the wall like hammer nails. In you. <laughs> just got walls full of fingernails. <laughs> oh, you mean hammer nails. <laughs> it didn't occur to me that fingernails in the walls would be weird. <laughs> you don't think that's weird? It does now. <laughs> When I said it, <laughs> I don't know why my brain automatically imagines <laughs> fingernails in the walls. <laughs> like maybe people's hands, their fingers got tore off while they were building. I don't you know, know. It doesn't really say. So whichever one you want to pick <laughs> and believe in. Concordia. <laughs> that's what up. they found on the walls. It is type 2 Kansas. We don't know what goes on there. We don't know your life. Oh, uh, well, gross. <laughs> I can't get past that. <laughs> <laughs> More recently, an employee from the grocery store across the street reported seeing a couple dressed in old fashioned thank you attire <laughs> <laughs> entering the building through a door that has always been locked. Oh, okay. Also, paranormal investigators have reported EVPs, shadow figures backstage and in the balcony, and disembodied voices in the theater's catwalk. There was pretty much three areas to investigate. The first is the basement, which is like basically where they keep all their props and costumes, I would say. Yeah, like a storage area. Mm-hmm. And they do have like a um, boiler room, mm-hmm. which is hotter than heck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Shockingly, it's mm-hmm. very warm in there. Mm-hmm. It's very warm in there. Above that, and that is like directly underneath the stage because they would like come down there and change. And then there's like little stairs that lead up onto the stage. Above that is the stage, which, you know, you can investigate. And there's the whole theater. It's got the upper balcony and then like side balconies. Um, so we investigated up on the balconies and then I don't feel like we really investigated on the stage very much. No. Took some cute pictures on the stage. We did. Behind the stage is where like the dressing rooms are and we did investigate there. And there are more dressing rooms on the second level also behind the stage. And so mm-hmm. we investigated both of those dressing rooms. All the dressing rooms. All the dressing rooms we went to. Let's go to the basement. Okay, so we go to the basement at 10.51 p.m. Oh. It is noted. Mm -hmm. All right, so there are three recorders. We put one back in the hot room, is what I called it. And then we put the other two in the basement with us. 
One was on a wicker chair, and then one was just like laying around with us. So those two recorders, they're pretty similar because it's the same room and the same time period. First thing Boydson said is that she does not like the hot part of the basement. She does not like the vibes there. I didn't. This is a public investigation. I don't know if I said that. Public investigation. It's kind of difficult to gather evidence. There was three or four people with us and then someone who was leading the group. And so we were talking about how we had talked to Jim upstairs, who is one of the spirits that is well known there. And we are doing the Necrophonics app on this. And they did it differently. Yeah. They like they use one of the effects, I think, more than we yes. typically do, it's which is fine. Just- the repetitive one. So they ask a question and instead of it just going like, no, it goes, no, 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 no. Names we got were Ed or Ted. It's hard to tell. We called it both. We got listen to her. And so it's like, it says the same word like two or three times and then it's all spaced out. So it's like, listen, 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 two, 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 her, her, her. Which I thought was kind of cool because you don't get like long, we didn't get long phrases with this. A kid voice came through and Sarah, you said, is that a kid? And it went, no. (laughs) Not me. (laughs) Handsome came through. Are you there? Came through. One of the people who helped lead this group is named Mike, and we were talking about how they like Mike and like to talk to him, and we said, do you like Mike? And I said, yes. We asked another question. It was not giving us any response. I said, I need a yes or a no, and it said no. And I was like, well, okay. Can't be mad about that. One of the names that they said earlier in another group kept coming through was Anya, which is someone who was at the group, like in another group, and they thought that was interesting because that's a hard name to say, Mm -hmm. especially for a spirit box. Um, At this point, we do turn off the necrophonics and we do the spirit box instead because the necrophonics was just very repetitive. Yeah. So the spirit box is what we did next, which is, you know, it's scanning frequencies. So you're getting a lot of white noise and static. Upstairs earlier, we had asked for what was their favorite play. And West Side Story was one that we had mentioned. And so one of the first things that came through on the spirit box was West Side. Michael Jackson sounding voice came through that said, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) <laughs> except it was very high pitched like a Sarah Sarah <laughs> what <laughs> you did it you did an imp- you then did Michael Jackson impressions <laughs> but I don't remember how he sounds with yeah you were like yeah or I can't even do it <laughs> that was, that was, that was not it no that was not it <laughs> if I could remember what I sounded like because <laughs> then he started going like hee hee yes, that's what I would have done I don't remember how he sounds when he says yeah I didn't put the I didn't put the what time it was but anyways um we got some michael jackson impressions from sarah and that's always a joy (laughs) you're welcome um and need i remind you this is a public investigation there were other people in this group (laughs) i did not care (laughs) it's okay i embarrassed myself later um i said i was embarrassed (laughs) (laughs) i was perfectly fine (laughs) do it again (laughs) do it again (laughs) At some point during the night before this, we had heard like three knocks like in a row Mm. and we were mad about it. We talked about it in this recording because we had literally just stopped recording, like push the stop button and then heard the knocks. They reported that they had a DR60 and heard the knock and got it captured on there. We were all in different groups at the moment and we all were like, we thought it was you guys. And we're like, no, we thought it was you. It was nobody. Like nobody owned up to the knocks, but we all heard it from different points in the theater. At some point, we're all talking, and we hear, I hear a dog, a yip-yip. On the recorder. On the recorder. Um, None of us called it out in real time. None of us stopped talking to be like, did you guys hear that? What was that? But it's very obvious in the recorder. I don't know what it is. (laughs) It sounds like a little yippy dog. It does. And like I said, this is like probably 1130 now at night. Can't imagine there'd be a dog yipping that we wouldn't have called out. But who knows? And then I embarrassed myself by talking repeatedly about Harry Potter with the other people in our group <laughs> because they had tattoos of Harry Potter. Yes, I remember. And so we were comparing tattoos. We were talking about all this stuff. And he has the stars tattooed on him, too. And I go, oh, you got big stars. Mine are little. <laughs> <laughs> who let you out of the house? <laughs> Literally for like 10 minutes, I'm talking Harry Potter with him. I'm talking about how I went to Harry Potter World and I cried when I was there. <laughs> We talk about the books. We're talking about the new series, like all of this stuff. That's precious. You were really inspired. (laughs) During all of this, our group decides to go into like the hot room. You guys start going. I am talking Harry Potter. (laughs) You have other things to do. Sarah calls out to me repeatedly. Lindsay, 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 come on. 
<laughs> and then she just goes, Lindsay cannot hear me. <laughs> and Boydson was like, no, Lindsay is ignoring us. <laughs> It was accurate. I'm sorry. I stand behind it. (laughs) About three minutes later, me and the Harry Potter guys, we go to the back room with you guys. It took a while. (laughs) We went to the back room at about 42 minutes into this recording, and we left these two recordings still going in the basement. Like, didn't move them. And five minutes later, the music box goes off that we had put on the stairs coming down when none of us were over there. And then we came back out. We didn't last very long in the hot room because it was really hot, but Sarah wanted it notated that her heart rate was up to 130 when she was in the hot room. It did that a couple times that night. Again, it's like a weird thing my body does. I don't like it. Mm -mm. Um, The only other thing that I have, I heard a possible whistle on the other recording that was in the basement, but I'm not too confident on that because there was other people. Could have been someone whistling upstairs for all we know. And you guys didn't like the hot room. For a couple of reasons. Mm-hmm. Because it was hot. (laughs) That was a big one. (laughs) Blazing hot. Also, the vibes were off. Vibes were off. What were the the vibes? Off. Off. Yeah. (laughs) Not on. (laughs) The opposite of on. (laughs) Not bad. Not good. Just indifferent. (laughs) I love it. Thank you. So we went upstairs to the balcony. And we went as a group. We did. People report seeing a pink mist in the balcony. They report getting the names of Catherine and Gertrude. And in the seats, throughout the seats, they've seen a little girl and Earl. Wasn't Earl's widow Gertrude? Yeah, that was her name. Okay, very cool. Um, We used dowsing rods. We had the ghost lights, which I should now clarify are tripwire. Nope, ghost lights. (laughs) And they're Christmas ghost lights at Christmas. That's what Lindsay calls them. (laughs) They're Christmas lights (laughs) year-round. Okay. But the main point was just to have like a little dowsing rod session, which I know you guys really love. I hate dowsing (laughs) rods. I'm just not good at them. The same. But I tried. I really did try. We did try. Thank for effort. Sarah said, I think I gripped these way too hard. (laughs) And Lindsay said, that's what she said. (laughs) I knew it. (laughs) I read past me's mind. (laughs) So basically, yeah, you lasted just a few minutes and I you're like, it. the, the leader came <laughs> over because like she let us kind of break off into small groups with the dowsing rods uh-huh. and then she comes back over and uh, you guys call me out again. Wow. Because you're good at dowsing rods. I'm sorry that we are recognizing your strengths. It was acceptable because it was in front of one person. Oh my gosh. I felt so like it was a safe You safe do zone. it one time and it she will, will never forgive you. No, I do not. You are not forgiven. <laughs> I will never say when you are good at something ever again. I mean, you can say it to me personally. And not to other people. Right. Okay. Just don't, rule of thumb, don't bring attention to me. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, Sarah gets a tickle in her back. <laughs> a little tickle tickle. That sounds fun. It sounded fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we did a little bit of, we tried. You guys, you guys gave it the effort with the dowsing rods. Thank you. We really did. Thank you. And we were able to pick up that there was an adult male there who lived in Concordia. Okay. And worked at the BGT. <laughs> this feels like a fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> we hear other people upstairs saying that they got a response to Gertrude. Um, they said, no, they didn't like the nutcracker. Lindsay said, okay, then can you tell me what your favorite, what is your favorite play? And I said, well, not with the rods. They can't. <laughs> All sassy. <laughs> Which is true. It's yes, or, yes or no. a dowsing rods professional. <laughs> you are. Okay. Not a water witch. So, yeah, we just had a little bit of fun. We also took some more pictures. We didn't mention that we felt anything or got anything else. Maybe a few responses with the, the ghost, ri- ghost lights, but that's about it for the balcony. To the dressing rooms. All right. Okay. So we're going to start with the dressing room directly behind the stage on the first floor. Uh, this was at 8.26 p.m. Noted. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. We, at this point in time, we were with the whole group and Mike is um, investigating with us and I can hear him talking and explaining the different types of equipment that everybody's using. And we decided to go ahead and do an EVP session in this in this room. Mike says, let's start by saying a yes or no question. And then I start by asking, what is this place to you? (laughs) (laughs) You did not listen to the rules. (laughs) Although that is a very good question I have heard. I think it is. (laughs) Probably one of the best. Uh, (laughs) Okay. 
that hurt my feelings when that happened. I was like, oh, oh that was stupid. Yes. <laughs> Can't answer this question. Ask again, please. <laughs> okay. Well, basically, we, we tried to do this for a little while. We didn't get anything. So we decided to move upstairs uh, because we can hear the group in the basement very loudly. So we yes. didn't stay in this dressing room too long. So anyhow, we move upstairs. We try to walk around and feel like which of the two rooms, or actually there's three upstairs, which of the three rooms is giving us the most vibes, if you will. And every everybody ends up coming into the room where we were at the end of the hallway. And I just want to point this out that I just innocently sneeze. And Lindsay goes, ew, oh my God, gross. <laughs> And I was like, I'm sorry Why? for sneezing, Lindsay. Why would I say I that? I don't know. <laughs> what got into you? I'm so sorry. Why? I sound like awful. <laughs> you started laughing, but only after I said, I'm sorry for sneezing. Gosh, I hate myself sometimes. <laughs> no, no, no. It's funny <laughs> listening back. I'm sorry. Oh, apology accepted. You were allowed to sneeze in front of me. I want Thank you to you. feel comfortable with that. <laughs> um, while we're sitting in the room... I complain of a headache briefly above my left eye. Uh, okay. Eyebrow ache. <laughs> eyebrow ache <laughs> from raising it too much. <laughs> but it went away pretty quickly. So I just called it out on the recorder. And um, I don't want to brag or anything, but like Mike said some nice things about me. Yes, he did. And I just want to tell you what he said. Okay, oh, please. I'm very interested. <laughs> he said that I vibrate with a frequency and that I am in between an empath and a person who knows slash sees things. These, these are all facts. <laughs> that was very kind of him to say that. So, it's kind of weird that it says you vibrate, but yeah. Next time we're at an investigation, yeah. if you're like, I'm getting a pain right here, I'm going to say, Sarah, stop vibrating. She's, vi- vibrating, she's vibrating. energy. <laughs> Just ignore my friend, Sarah. She is vibrating. You do not understand her frequency. <laughs> no, no, no. All I'm going to say is, don't worry. She vibrates. <laughs> <laughs> Where's her off switch? <laughs> <laughs> Take the batteries out when you're vibrating. <laughs> we get uncomfortable when you vibrate. I'm going to have to deal with my vibrations, okay? <laughs> okay, at this point, we decide to do another EVP session with the group, and we do hear something when we play it back, and I have it on the recorder. We can't really make out what it says at that point. Um, we do another recording, and then we get back probably a sentence. We couldn't make out the words. And we think it says something like, this is my first time. And this was in response to, are you in a play here? Okay. Do you work here? We continued to do a couple more EVP sessions. And there were definitely some things that came through. We couldn't really make out what they were. And while we're talking, the cat ball goes off. Winston asks, can you touch the sack? (laughs) What sack? Sack. Oh, he had a sack of balls. (laughs) The cat balls were all in a sack Thank together. You. Yeah, so touch the sack. A ball. And so, yes, <laughs> She's... I say sack of balls because who said it first? Woodson you... did. <laughs> Before you said it, you go, I feel really bad asking this, but can you touch the balls on her sack? Can you touch the sack? And then Mike says, they're pretty fun to play with, aren't they? <laughs> and you two had a little laughing moment. Nobody else laughed. Uh, Mike it was gets funny. me. Yeah, you guys had a moment. We move to the other room upstairs and then all of us say that we hear something and we describe it all as something different, which I think was really funny. I heard a laugh. I heard a man clear his voice. Like None of us were on the same page. So we go back to the dressing room again. This time we're alone. Poitston's using the new amplifying headphones. And we mentioned that a child has been seen there in Catherine. And then after a few minutes, you didn't catch anything. So I put on the headphones and then I say, I need these for everyday life. Um, I'm like, Cause I they're... can hear you breathing. <laughs> yes. I a can smaller see. version would be a hearing aid. <laughs> Interesting, because then you guys both start encouraging me. You should really think about getting a hearing aid. <laughs> I know people that wear hearing aids. So I know, yeah. I do too. My brother-in-law I said wears this, one. This is exactly the conversation that we had. <laughs> I think it was more us encouraging you to go get your hearing tested or checked. That's what you said. See? And then Boise said... <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude, but you should look at yes. You're welcome. Okay, but I did hear something on the headphones that it sounded like I was, or I described it as somebody saying what, but I didn't catch it on the recording. So then, about 16 minutes in, 
was the loudest banging on the pipes and it sounded like it was in the room with us and it was one at a time, like over and over probably uh, four or five times. And we were like trying to, you know, debunk it, of course, because we're right above the basement. That's where the boiler room was. So we were like, oh, maybe it's the boiler. Maybe it makes this terrible sound. We try to rule it out. We're trying everything we can to debunk it. So Lindsay goes first and you go out just like onto the stage where there's a group of people Mm -hmm. and you're trying to say, did you guys hear that? They heard it. They said that they thought we did it. And then Lindsay peeks downstairs. There's nobody down there Mm -hmm. at all. So you come back and then I decide I'm going to go ask the historian if this is something that happens like regularly. So I go out there and she's like, no. And we heard that and we thought it was you guys. And I was like, well, this is hurtful that everybody thinks we ban pipes. <laughs> We're just in there going. Just really loud. <laughs> while everybody's trying to record shit. I could shit. see it though. Spirits. <laughs> not for that. Just to be like, oh, look, something to make drums on. And then we just bang on the pipes. Not even paying attention. <laughs> or like how yep. at Crescent where I rattled the door when they were right outside of it. <laughs> yes, that was hilarious. Uh, you heard some people scream. <laughs> They're like, what did you that? just see the door move? What was that? Oh, oh it's haunted. <laughs> Ooh. We're the assholes. <laughs> we honestly were. That was mean. Just that one time. <laughs> it was. And the spirit of Theodora got back at us in the middle of the night. <laughs> she, she sure did. did. <laughs> but you're right. That's what it was from. <laughs> yes. She was like, don't pretend. <laughs> I will break shit you're and wake you me. up. You're not In the middle of the night. So, um... Lindsay finally puts the headphones on and she's also amazed at how everything is so loud. <laughs> this is that's our all first you keep time using them. <laughs> I can hear you breathe. I can hear you shuffling. I can hear your leg move. It was so funny. <laughs> we were really excited <laughs> about this. Thing. I can hear you looking at me. <laughs> it was always like, oh my God, I heard the heat go on. Oh my God, I can hear your leg moving. Oh my God. I can... <laughs> it's I'm like those narrating everything. I those hear. colorblind people that can that have those glasses and they finally, oh, look, blue. <laughs> green that's pink i can hear <laughs> that's why i thought it was so funny because i did the same thing <laughs> we are amazed wow i can hear you breathe <laughs> yes <laughs> both said it oh no Lindsay asked um do you like to dance and then boyston a few seconds after says you you heard a hmm and I think I can kind of hear a voice, but I can't tell if it's from in the room, outside of the room. Mm-hmm. And then the other the other thing was we heard a tap in the room. Tippity tap. Tip tap. Thank goodness. So I also had just one of the recordings for the balconies. Nope. <laughs> for the <laughs> um, dressing room. It's one of the dressing room up, dressing rooms upstairs. Oh, I think yes. it's one of the, it is one of the last places we went. Mm-hmm. So we find a beautiful portrait of an <laughs> old couple immediately. We did. I love that portrait and we had to make a two-person portrait into a three-person portrait and we wanted to like <laughs> pretend we were them and make the same faces uh-huh. <laughs> and so we were each assigned people and then somebody got a double assignment <laughs> me <laughs> so we took some pictures uh, we named the couple bill and jean and then of course we sang <laughs> billy jean billy jean yeah. we, but as bill and jean michael jackson was on our brains <laughs> <laughs> Sarah says, after reviewing the pictures, Sarah says, Boydson is on the spectrum in that picture. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Such a true friend. But see, I I was, here's the great thing. Payback for you telling her to get a hearing aid. (laughs) It's not though, because I was not offended. I was like, you know what? I really think I am. And so I was just encouraged by you. <laughs> it just confirmed it. <laughs> <laughs> Onesie says that she hears a mm-mm, ev- but I don't have anything. It's like an EVP. I can't hear it. Yeah. Um, and then there are additional background pipe noises, but this time I think it sounds like running water. So Not, not banging on the pipes? <laughs> well, it sounded like tapping, but it's like, I don't know. It didn't sound like the other ones did. Yeah. So that's what we got at the Brown Grant, the BGT. Do we want to give a rating? Public investigations are hard to rate. No, like Lindsay said, public investigations are kind of getting harder and harder because I think our expectations are a little higher after going to a lot of private investigations. Yeah, I agree. Um, And so it's just impossible to get much. Like you have to have like a real neat 
like one of a kind experience in order to entertain us on a private invest or a public investigation, basically. Yeah. It's not to say that we don't have fun. It's not to say that we didn't still get vibes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think there's something there. It just didn't, you know, blow me out of the water. Yeah. And I will say they did, they did give us quite a bit of alone time. It's just that the venue is fairly small. So you can hear other groups pretty clearly in your recordings a lot. So yeah. It was a really cool place. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would like to do a private there. Um, I think that would be fun. And stay overnight. I'd like to stay overnight. Sleep on the stage. Yes, I agree. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in this week to our haunted investigation of the BGT. You can always find us at thetipsyghost.com with our socials linked from there or send us an email at thetipsyghost at gmail.com. Please give us a five-star rating and a great review anywhere you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it. And it really does help. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We will catch you next week. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.